Hello, dear friends. Here we are. It's the Medium's Harvest, a book written by Emmanuel through the Medium Chico Xavier. The book brings to us new understanding on mediumship, mostly an experience of feeling, feeling what mediumship is all about. Many people know, even in the Spiritist uh, Harvest, what it is. But it's a different thing when we feel it. One thing is to know we need to love, and the other is to really feel the love. And that's why today we are going to enter a new chapter, chapter 76, which is titled Magnet. What are we going to talk about? As we've said before, it's going to talk about the famous law of attraction. In Spiritism, we call it the law of the mental field. As Andre Lewis describes in a book that is yet to be in English, Mechanisms da Mediunidade, Mechanisms of Mediumship. In that book, he explains that we are going to attract what we have emitted. Emmanuel, when he wrote chapter 76 titled Magnet, he was basing himself in item 232 of the Medium's book by Allan Kardec. And we are going to read the item to understand more deeply where he's coming from, to contextualize it. So let's see what he said. Kardec wrote, in chapter 21, titled The Influence of the Surroundings on Mediumship. Item 232. Kardec says, it would be a mistake to believe, to believe it necessary to be a medium in order to attract the beings of the invisible world. They are everywhere. They are constantly around us next to us. They watch and observe us, interfere in our meetings, and follow or avoid us, depending on whether we attract or repel them. The mediumistic faculty does not have any influence upon this. Rather, it is simply a means of communication. According to what we have seen concerning the causes of sympathy and antipathy among spirits, we can easily understand that we are surrounded by those who have an affinity with our own spirit, that is, according to our advancement. If we would further consider the moral state of our globe, we would comprehend what kinds of spirits must predominate among discarnate spirits. If we were to regard each nation in particular, we would be able to discern which orders of spirits would be found in it by the dominant character, which orders of spirits would be found in it by the dominant character of its citizens and the degree of their moral and humanitarian preoccupations and sentiments. Using this as a starting point, let us imagine a meeting of frivolous and inconsequential individuals who are solely interested in their own pleasures. What kinds of spirits would prefer to be amongst them? Surely not highly evolved ones, since our own scholars and philosophers would not waste any of their time in such places. Hence, every time People meet together, there is amongst them a concealed assembly of spirits who sympathize either with their good qualities or imperfections, aside from all thoughts of evocation. Now, let us suppose that there is a possibility for these persons to communicate with beings from the invisible world through an interpreter, that is, a medium. Which spirits will respond to their call? Obviously, the ones who are already there, who are looking for nothing more than a favorable opportunity 
If a high order spirit were evoked during a frivolous meeting, it might answer and even utter some sensible words like a good shepherd who comes to his wandering sheep. However, if it sees that it's being neither understood nor listened to, it will leave, as you would do it in its place, and the other spirits would have the field free for themselves. Based on this item 232 of the Medium's Book by Allan Kardec, we know that the rule of thumb is we're going to attract what we emit. Okay? So they say here to us, spirits are everywhere. It's interesting because there are people who tell me, Vanessa, don't tell me about spirits. I don't want to talk about it. I'm afraid of them. Do you think they are not going to be here just because you're afraid of them? They are here. And by being afraid, you're becoming more vulnerable. But I don't want to talk about it. Please, no, no, don't, don't talk about spirit. Don't talk about spirit. I respect when people say that. Well, let us think together, huh? Talking about them, not necessarily, is the way we attract. We attract just by the way we are. Kardec once asked, which kinds of spirits are constantly around us? And the answer of the spirits was, four different types. Protecting spirits, superior to us. They're here to guide us. Sure thing, they are connected to us. Like parents, good parents, by the way, and children. They're constantly giving an eye, even if it is through a camera. Okay? Now, let's talk about the second type. Family spirits, familiar spirits, spirits whom we have a relationship whether they are more evolved or not, it's another thing. They may be our level, inferior, superior, but we have history together. And they like us. Not necessarily they like the people that we like. Okay? Third, third type of spirit, spirits of affinity. They like what we like. If we like spiritism, Always going to be around us, spirits who like spiritism. We like soccer, spirits who like soccer. You think people discarnate and they start disliking soccer? No. They continue liking soccer and they like uh, American football. And they like whatever you like, classical ballet. If you like watching movies of a certain type, they may be doing the same thing. And the fourth type? obsessors. Usually we think the spirits who are around us are only the obsessive part of it. Not necessarily. There are four different types. They are just a third of it. So we need to keep that in mind that spirits are everywhere as Kardec says and we're going to attract by the nature of our vibrations. And he gives a beautiful example. If you gather together just to please yourselves, like for example, sex addiction, alcohol, go to a bar. What kinds of spirits are going to be in a bar? Oh yeah, there are spirits who want to help, but majority of them are not of high order. And it's going to be hard to feel good for a while because they come with us. They follow us. As Kardec says here, they follow us. They come where we are. They meet with us. They watch and observe us, interfere in our meetings, follow or avoid us, and that's the nature of things. What does Emmanuel have to add to it? Why did he choose this particular item in the Medium's book to bring a specific highlight for us? What is it? Chapter 76. Let's read it, right? Magnet. Public meeting on October 17, 1960, based on item 232 of the Medium's book, chapter 21. Emmanuel then 
explains to us. Near, very near to you, there are those who are, have preceded you on the journey of death. Those who ascended to the heights of the mountains refer to the light. However, those who descended into the caves of the valley are agitated in the dark. Many have sublimated themselves with the sweat of the service. They show that it is worth fighting and suffering. They say that good may be done. They appeal to the good because God is love. However, those who cling to the lower passions plunge into darkness as creatures of the mud and in great despair. They call upon evil to which they attach themselves, weak, in tremendous illusion. All who marched to the extreme aid of others teach you to convert thorns into everlasting rose gardens. But those who have despised the fellow creatures in the frenzied attachment to self-possession will induce you to look at temporary roses as stringent thorns. Do not either affirm, I am a stone, or say, I can't see it. In the home of thought, we are all together. Each spirit chooses the force on which it is inspired. Reasoning rules, feelings guide. Therefore, you bring within the helm of fate hidden in the mind, concealing in the chest the impulses that direct you, because everything thrives in the blows of desire, and the magnet of desired is called the heart. Apparently simple, but not so much. On the earth, we are awakening to the fact that we have a power named thought. Thought is an electromagnetic force. What does it mean? It's tangible. It has a material component to it. Particles, electrical particles, exactly. And as much as they are emitted, they have a magnetic component which makes attract similar components, doubling up what we're emitting. So if I emit joy, I'm going to pair up with those who are thinking of joy. If I'm thinking of addictions, I'm going to join in the club of addictions. So here we are, friends, the true understanding, the mechanism of the law of attraction, the so-called law of attraction. Andre Louis says the law of the mental field. I am attracting what I have emitted. And you may be asking, but Vanessa, I only think of beautiful thoughts. I only think of doing the good and look what happens to me. You're right. In this life, there is no apparent explanation. But the law of attraction does not happen in segments. The law of attraction happens in its continuum. Look at the sky, take a telescope, observe the light, of the stars. First of all, stars are not pointy. Did you know it? Stars are not pointy. Mm -mm -mm. It's a visual illusion that stars are pointy. It's actually the radiation of its light that makes us look at it as pointy. But they are not. Second, the light that we're seeing not necessarily means that the star is still living there. Astronomers are going to explain to us that oftentimes we're looking at the light of the star, but the star is already dead. But the star 
emitted that light which is traveling through the cosmos and reaching us light years away. And what reaches us now was sent many light years ago. This is us. We today emit a thought, a feeling, word, and action, depending on the frequency and the intensity of those thoughts, feelings, words, and actions. They are going to reverberate in many lives to come. So we need to pay attention to what we're saying because those things stay in us, remain with us for a long while. And there are things that we're experiencing today that are byproduct of many lives ago. You know, some people, they make mistakes and they sentence themselves. They discarnate. That sentencing is still reverberating. I'll give an example. Some people say they make a mistake in a relationship and they tell themselves, I'm never going to get married again. I don't feel that I deserve it. They discarnate. They reincarnate. And that self-sentencing is still imprisoning them. And they, I can't find somebody. I would love to. Well, get yourself out of your own jail. You sentence yourself. Get yourself out of there. Forgive yourself. If we observe ourselves, the instinctive tendencies we're going to observe, when we make an effort to know more of ourselves, the roots that we have created for our own lives. And that's what Emmanuel is telling us. He's telling us that we have the power to attract according to what we think and feel. Homework for us. Number one. Mm, what is it? What kind of thoughts and feelings do I mostly have during the day? Because there are people who say, I would like to be happy. One thought. And then the rest of the 10,000 thoughts a day are all about self-defeat. I don't deserve Look at people, de -de -de. majority of people on earth are like this. That's why we need a good work, workout for the soul. What is it? Every day go to the gym of the soul with Jesus. Zumba class. He's saying, I love and approve of myself in ways that are pleasing to God. And you're going to sweat. I love and approve of myself in ways that are pleasing to God. No, it's not enough. He didn't stop. I love and approve myself and faster in ways that are pleasing to God. Faster! I love and approve myself in ways that are ple I'm sweating a little bit already. Are you? Yeah? No, no kidding. You think it's hard to say that? It may be extremely hard for some people because they don't feel it. They're like, oh, silly. That's so silly. No, no, no. That is called self-love. I look at myself and I say, I take good care of myself. I respect my body. I respect my life and my limits. And people understand my limits and I understand their limits too. And I think good well of people as much as they think well of me. I trust in the best in people and they trust the best in me. I emit my love for people. I am loving and I am loved. I am loving and I am loved. I am loving and I am loved. Okay? So our dear sunshine is asking, a while ago we talked about thoughts are things by Prentice Mulford. B-R-E. 
N T I C E Mulford M U L F O R D Fantastic author. Thank you, Sunshine, for asking. So for us, we're talking about two worlds. We no longer see life in one world, do we? The homework of the previous chapter was to explain things from the spirit, from the angle of the spiritist perspective. No longer we see life, material world only. But Vanessa, I'm not a medium. You don't need to be a medium. You have the knowledge. You have Spiritism 101 in your heart. You already know enough to extrapolate situations and understand that life is much more than the eyes can see. Even if you think you are not a medium. Because at the end of the day, we're all mediums. We have just not noticed yet. But mediumship is everywhere and in everyone. So, for us, Kardec says something in item 232 in Emmanuel quotes. Near, very near to you, there are those who have preceded you on the journey of death. Around you and I, with you and I, like the network that you have on Facebook, network on your cell phone, you're connected. But you have a network, a spiritual network. Who is in this network? It's not hard to say. Look at ourselves. Our good and difficult tendencies. Our easy loving ways and hard difficult ways. What kinds of spirits? In that range, a whole lot of minds. And the minds that we attract each and every day. Mm -hmm. We need to be very vigilant. It's for no other reason that Jesus said, Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Right? Watch and pray. Watch is this inner observation. You may be asking, Vanessa, but how practically do I observe myself. Physically speaking, you need to have a good relationship with your body. Okay? Look at your body and say, body, now let's stay still, okay? Oh, and the body's gonna say, but I'm hungry. Okay, I'm gonna give you some food and then you're gonna sit still. We're gonna meditate a little bit. I'm thirsty. Listen to the body because the cells are not you. You may not be hungry, you may not be thirsty, it's spirit, but the physical body has its needs. We need to attend to its needs like we're attending to the needs of a pet. And this is a super pet. I look at it, give what it needs, and I say, right now, stay comfortable, okay? And now we're gonna think together. Feel breathe in and out. Three times, breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Hold it. Stay there. And ask yourself questions. Or just observe what comes. You want to know more about yourself. Be truthful. Face it. We cannot remodel a house without actually seeing the problems of the house. I won't be able to fix it, so we need to be courageous. For this reason, Jesus advised us that the follower of the good news needs to have courage as a trademark. Faith, hope, joy, hope, and courage. Joy, hope, and courage. Without the courage to see who, who we are, we won't be able to move forward. <laughs> You're funny, Liva. My spirit feels hungry very often. That's funny, Livia. Hungry for life, right? So let's think about this, the courage. And I ask myself, I see I still have envy inside of me. 
I still have jealousy inside of me. I still have this impulse to control. But don't smash yourself for it or because of it. Look at yourself with kindness and say, I understand you. It's hard. But come on. You don't need to feel those things. And work feeling by feeling. You know, it would be nice to control everything. But if you have God, you don't need to control anything. No? No. But my husband, my wife, my daughter, my son, my mom, my dad, my friend, my sister, my brother. They don't need to control. No? No. But what if the world, God is in control. But what if that person, God is in control. What if the president of that country, God is in control. But what if my son decides God is in control? You don't need to control anything. But manage yourself. We tell ourselves. And then when it comes to other issues, letting go. This is what the spirits say detachment is all about. Many people think that detachment is a material thing. I'm super detached. I don't need many things. Mm -hmm. Detachment is not only about material things. It's about attachment to ego-driven things. When you think, what if those people are thinking about this, about me? So I'm attached to this personality. What does the guided model Jesus tell us? It's their problem if they do. I'm not going to manipulate anybody. I'm not going to make a phone call. I'm not going to have to prove myself to anybody. If people see it, they see it. If they don't see it, they have their right not to see it. So that's a step into detachment too. And detachment is a vibratory state. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. Okay? Vibrations. Emmanuel talks about cases of the spirits who are around us, are elevated. What do they tell us? They bring us light. They bring us counsels to sacrifice ourselves. The good spirits are always going to push you to serve more push us to do more good, to help others. The low order spirits are always going to tell you, you've done enough, you need a break, you, you have done too much, and they do more. They see the beautiful things and transform into bad things. There are people who are capable of reading Andrew Lewis books, and saying that they are a little fictitious or too fictitious. I wonder which kind of spirits are whispering in the mind of that person. Not good spirits. The good spirits are going to see beautiful roses and transform as Emmanuel says into thorns. That's what the inferior spirits try to do with Jesus. To make him look like a womanizer. You will appreciate Jesus, and so do I. We are yet to love him as he loves us. But the way people used to look at him in the past was horrible. They would look at him as if he is like this person of low class, womanizer, drunkard, lazy. Can you believe it? This is the human mind. And there are many people around the world today 
who are capable of seeing the most beautiful works and painting it in black. And in the spiritist movement, unfortunately, it's no different. There are people who see others working for the good of the general good and they attempt to denigrate the efforts. Which kind of spirits are surrounding that person? Good spirits? No. Because the good spirits are always going to value the efforts of the good. Bad spirits. Right? So he says to us, <clears throat> Do not say you don't feel anything, that you are not a medium, it's not on you. No, no, no. In the home of the thought, we are all together. We connect to other minds in our thought. When people say, please don't talk to spirits, but the thought that you have is attracting other minds. You don't need to say a word. By feeling and being and thinking, we connect. Our connections are driven by our vibratory patterns, and that's what it is. Emmanuel wraps up this by saying, reasoning rules, feelings, guide. That's why we need to do a lot of emotional workout because our guidance comes from our feelings which drive the will. And it says here that the desire is what makes the connections. The magnet of desire is in our vibration. In the book Action and Reaction, we learn about it. The book Liberation, we also learn about the vibratory pattern. What am I vibrating? It depends on the feelings I have every day. So a good exercise, second exercise, is to write down the top 10 feelings I have each and every day. Just to understand which kinds of spirits I may be connected each and every day. And it may vary from phase, of, phase to phase in our lives. Right? Fernando Oliveira is saying, Kardec's thought, get me here. Yes, Fernando. That's what it is. So here we are, friends, with a single opportunity to know more of ourselves and to change the course of our lives by grabbing the bull by the horn, literally grabbing the bull of our feelings by the horn. How do we do it? Awareness is the first step. The second step is identifying the feelings. Science already tells us that we need to put consciousness into our emotional life. And once we do, we start naming our emotions. Name them. And then you know which kinds of connections you're making. Don't be afraid of making the identity clarifying to yourself, explaining what you're feeling. If you're feeling rejected, say, I'm feeling rejected. But it doesn't make sense. It doesn't matter. It's not about logics. It's about feelings. I'm feeling undermined by life circumstances. Write it down. I'm feeling that I am afraid. Write it down. Afraid of what? Fear of? Da 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 da. I'm feeling anxious about? Da 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 da. I'm feeling frustrated because? Da 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 da. And of course, the good and healthy emotions too. I'm joyful because? Da 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 da. And write down and observe. You don't need to write a dissertation, but points outlining what you've been feeling lately are going to give you a little more management to your emotions. And then you can talk to yourself, saying from a spiritist perspective, let's see what we can do about this fear. Fear of 
that the world's gonna end. Well, the world is gonna end, but the world, it's such a big place, right? And there is a command, higher command. So if the higher command allows it to end, then there is gonna be another place for us. Why am I gonna be afraid? Oh, because I wanna make sure that I have all my family on the last day. You may not have on the last day, but you have them for eternity. That's for immortality, that's a sure thing, right? So friends, tonight, thank you, Eliza, for your reflections. So friends, tonight, we're being called to recognize that in us lie a co-creative power. Have you ever tell, told yourself, I am a co-creator with God? You are God's co-pilot in your life. God is your pilot. You think you're the pilot, huh? No, no, no. You're the co-pilot, even in your life. Because God is driving your life. But He's allowing you to co-create on top of it. There are limits. And He's not sleeping. He's not silent. But He is participating, giving us an opportunity to co-create. So tonight, in this chapter 73 called Magnet, Emmanuel goes straight to the point. In mediumship, we are attracting what we have emitted. The spirits that are going to be in a mediumistic meeting are most likely the ones that pertain to our circle. Not only the circle of the mediumistic group, but the spirit is center, first and foremost. And then, of course, connections that pertain to it. We won't be able to go beyond it unless people are in the net. Okay. I know some people don't like networking, right? Because it's artificial. Because deep inside, we already have a network. When people in businesses, they go wild in this effort of networking, they are artificially creating something that is pertaining to the law of society. We all have a natural network of connections, discarnate and incarnated one. All we need to do is to expand it, hopefully, according to sublime ideals and not petty reasons, because that's when we don't feel good at networking in our business relationships, right? It feels almost like hypocrite. So for us here, we're being called to reflect on what we are attracting according to what we're emitting. The magnet of our desire is in the heart. Right, La Souza? How are you? Eliza Geisel Rodriguez, thank you so much for your kindness and your presence. Fernando Oliveira, Rudy, we're going to co-create with Delbora at Kardec Radio tomorrow morning, exactly. Morning cafe with Delbra Belovix tomorrow, Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Rihanna is saying our thoughts should be to study always so we can serve always and through charity we evolve. Exactly. Beautiful works, Rihanna. We're together with Emmanuel. Luciana Nicoliello, what a joy to have you here. Livia Moraes, Sunshine, how are you? Amanda Andrade, ah, Andy Stewart, how are you? Gustave Maria Marcia, big hug to you, friends. Adilson, Sol Souza, and a beautiful daughter, Débora Tessarolo, how are you? Yay, Ceisa, beautiful Ceisa, John the Rose, our super eternal friend, Silvio Tero, how are you? Nina Dui, Teresa Catapano, how are you? Nora Brasil, Lisa Telles, how are you? Adriana Sanchez Monteiro, how are you? Leia Severo, super Leia Severo, 
Paula, how are you, Paula? Teresa Castro in Vermont, 17 degrees Fahrenheit at 11 p.m. Wow, a big warm hug to you, my friend. Okay, Rihanna and Nico, Karina Lisi in the team of Kardec Radio, beautiful, right? Julija, how are you? Maria Helena Marques, welcome. And who else is here? You wanna guess? You already know. Jesus, of course. Emmanuel, of course. Mentor Joseph, of course. Who else? Look at this. Ta da! Friends, enjoy co creating with God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carol. And don't forget, okay, before we wrap up. What's going to happen tomorrow? Shh, mamma mia. Tomorrow, it's a hot topic. Misguided mediums. Misguided mediums. That's why we love the superior spirits that are not afraid of pointing out the things we need to pay attention. They don't come and say, oh, in heavens, everything is beautiful. They say, you know what? Before you think of heaven, fix yourselves up. That's what they're saying. Misguided mediums, chapter 77. And just to give us some ideas about what they're going to be talking about. With regard to the mediums abandoned to their own, let us imagine our will in the instruments of men's use in sustaining progress. And they say, Mediums are reborn in the world with the characteristics of the ideal instrumentation. Mm. What if you decide not to use it or to abuse it? What happens? Is it a problem? If you say, nah, I don't want to do it. Nah, now, sometime later. <gasps> According to the laws of life, is there a problem? Uh, what we think is that there is some form of misguided mediumship. What is it? We need to know. We need to know chapter 77 tomorrow. As you and I march towards it, God willing, we will be back. Meanwhile, take the horse of your emotions. Ride on it. Tame it. And say, I love you, little horse of my emotions, but let us take it easy. So hold your horses, friend, and until tomorrow, say bye to Carol. Bye, friend. Bye. Jesus is passing by. <laughs>